Hey guys, Matt here from the Traveling Together Journal, bringing you another update on my camper build. You may remember I am building a hard-sided pop-up camper. In the last video, I finished the permanent structure of the camper. Now we need to build the moving components, starting with the pop-up. Looking at my drawing, this is where we are at now. And the next step is to build the pop-up walls. The light pink areas are insulated wall panels, and the red is window frame. The insulated wall panels for the pop-up are built using the same process I used for all of the other insulated walls I've built so far. A 1x2 Douglas fir frame held together with wood glue and pocket screws, with a sheet of 5mm plywood glued on both sides, then filled with polyurethane pour foam. And then coated with epoxy resin and 6 ounce fiberglass cloth. The corners of the rear wall were rounded off with a 1 inch radius router bit to match the corners of the lower wall sections. And the pop up walls going over the cab over were cut along the front and rear edges to accommodate the 9 degree angle of the cab over. To build the panels for the windows, I started by cutting a piece of 5mm plywood to size and cutting out the hole for the window. The windows going in these panels are from an old camper shell so they are designed to mount in a thin wall like this, making this part pretty simple. But I still needed to add some framing to the panel for rigidity and to mount it to the other parts of the camper. I ripped down a Douglas fir 1x2 with a 45 degree angle to fit into the limited space around the window frame and make it easier to glass. These were glued and screwed in place and some regular 1x2 was used to finish framing the forward insulated sections of each panel and the forward edges were cut to match the cab over sections. I decided to assemble the panels in place, so I used some clear packing tape to prevent me from accidentally epoxying the pop-up walls onto the camper. Then I clamped each section in place and joined them with wood glue and screws. Because the front panel doesn't meet the other panels at a 90 degree angle, I couldn't just round off the corner with a router bit. So it was just roughed out with an angle grinder and flapper disc before assembly. After assembly, I used a palm sander and sanding block to smooth out the final curve. All the screw holes were filled with an epoxy fume silica paste, and each seam was coated with epoxy and 6 ounce fiberglass. Now for the roof. I built this in three sections, each one with a Douglas fir frame, 5mm plywood skins, and filled with polyurethane pour foam. Then each section was put in place and attached with wood glue and pocket screws. Once that dried, I rounded off the top edge with a 1 inch radius router bit. Then I glassed the roof and over the seams onto the pop-up walls with epoxy resin and 6 ounce fiberglass cloth. To gain access to all of the inner seams between the walls and ceiling, I removed the pop-up from the camper. It was big, heavy, and awkward, but I managed to get it onto the ground and flipped over without dropping it. I used a mix of epoxy, chopped fiberglass, and fume silica to give a radius to the inner seam between the ceiling and walls, and then I glassed the ceiling and all of the joints. And finally, I glassed the bottom edge, which is now the top edge since it's flipped over, before shuffling it back up onto the camper. To guide the pop-up up, up and down, I planned on using five drawer slides mounted inside of the inner wall and to the ceiling using 90 degree shelving brackets. But this arrangement allowed for too much play in the system, so I remounted the drawer slides between the inner and outer walls with much better results. The drawer slides aren't quite wide enough to fill the 5 8 inch gap between the walls, so each one was mounted with a spacer in the form of a 16th inch thick aluminum flat bar, and attached with Loctite construction adhesive and number 10 pancake head screws. To help me lift the pop-up, I installed four gas struts. Two mounted as far forward as possible without interfering with the queen size mattress, and two at the far rear of the camper. The forward ones are rated at 80 pounds of lift, and the rear ones are 60. I also put a couple of handles on the ceiling that make it easier to control the lifting and lowering of the pop up, and some draw latches to hold the pop up in place when it's down. To create a seal between the pop-up and the camper, I added a piece of 1.5 inch wide, 
1 16th inch thick aluminum flat bar to the bottom edge of the pop-up using Loctite construction adhesive and number six flathead screws countersunk into the aluminum. The edge of the pop-up and each piece of aluminum were roughed up with 80 grit sandpaper and cleaned with denatured alcohol to help adhesion. And clamps with a piece of scrap steel were used to compress the thin aluminum into the adhesive. Once that was completely cured, I applied a D-shaped foam rubber seal with an adhesive backing to the top inner part of the aluminum flat bar. This was easy to cut and install. The most time consuming part was just cleaning the aluminum with denatured alcohol. Next came a cap of one and a half inch wide, one sixteenth inch thick aluminum flat bar on top of the inner camper wall. To install this, I used VHB tape and countersunk number six flathead screws. I didn't use the construction adhesive here like I did on the pop-up aluminum edging because it required a fair bit of cleanup once the excessive adhesive was compressed out and I wouldn't have access to the lower outer edge of this aluminum piece. The VHB tape is a bit pricier than the caulking but clean and easy to use. I can't really film the seal in action so here is an attempt at illustrating the design. There is a 5 8 inch gap between the camper wall and the pop-up wall. The aluminum flat bar sticks out a half inch from each wall, so the two pieces of aluminum overlap each other without making contact with the opposing wall. And when the pop-up is fully extended, the foam rubber seal is compressed between the two pieces of aluminum. It took some tinkering, but the pop-up is moving up and down easily now, and it feels really sturdy in the up position too. I am feeling pleased in my results and excited to have finally made it past this challenge in my build. Thanks for watching. Check out the description box for links to the tools and materials used in this video. And don't forget to join me next time as I build the camper doors and hatches.